Her name is um, related to Jonathan Livingston Seagull, right? And um, you once said that um, the book is concerning um, about to be like, about not to be like everybody else, and to be different, and to leave a sign or a trace on the road of life. And um, it's about um, not uh, to be uh, like, uh, yes, to be like everybody uh, tells you to be. And um, if one does not abide the um, common roads, uh, but to live their own dream. And due to those lines, um, how does this can be combined uh, with your daily business or um, your music? And um, yes, and which uh, problems are due to, uh, due to this alliance on your music? And There's a lot of questions there. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No, but I think I know where you're going. I, um, I think it's more the like the the road less traveled you know not just to go down the road that everyone else has gone down and that creates a lot of problems and a lot of um, obstacles in your way so to answer you there it does it you know if you're going to go and try and do something in your own way and not just do what everyone else has done then it kind of it creates some problem but that's part of the the fun as well you know okay. to to do your own thing and do you want to um, live this way um, in your music as well so do you want to show people within your music how we are different from everybody else? No, we're not no. particularly. Not really. I mean, you know, we're not. We're definitely not trying to uh, to teach any life lessons to people. Yeah. That's that's definitely mm -hmm. not the case. And I think sometimes when people ask us about our name, yes. and we say that, then people might interpret it as if we set this goal to like teach people lessons and stuff. We don't at all. No. Um, um, but, but I guess it it relates to our music for us personally uh, because you know if whenever we just do what kind of our hearts feel amongst us then it always has a good result mm -hmm. and when we don't then it doesn't okay. so that's Definitely. that's how it kind of relates for us to our own music you know I think, I think it's also more about not not so much about being different only but but to also just reach your full potential and just follow your dream as opposed to this is what everybody does so that's what I need to do and if your dream is going somewhere else then do that I think that's that's kind of that's very applicable to us that we're just following our heart and it took us down this road okay um, this leads me to my next question uh, question and your single broken um, is known all over the country in Germany as well and it's very famous and uh, very loved song from the fans and um, how do you explain this uh, great success and um, what is for you so special about this song? Well, it, it, yeah. no, well it, has, <laughs> it, it has a very nice, there's a very nice story attached to it because Birkis and I had only known each other for a few weeks okay. and it was one, either the first time we met up or... It was the first time. Yeah. First time Birkis came to my flat for a visit and um, yeah, we didn't really know each other that well and uh, and I've just given him some demos of stuff I'd recorded and he came around to sing on it and that was sort of the song that stood out or the idea and then he sang on it and that, then by him doing that it became a song and we sat in my tiny little room where you could hardly stand up and um, just had this really nice bonding moment it's like our first proper what well, this is we can do this together okay. mm -hmm. you know like Chris and Biggs had known each other for years already but it was our first moment and and it's it's quite funny that that then has accompanied us for the, the last 10 years yes. that very first song we wrote yes so uh, lyrical nearly mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay um you were founded in 2000 in the year 2000 right and um what would you say um, is the most unexpected uh, development and what was the best development so far? Um, actually, it is 2002. Oh, sorry. Yeah, oh, sorry. No worries, no worries. The, the best development, I guess, was the four of us, you know, hooking up. That was the no, actually, you know what, I'd, I'm going to answer that. A bit better than that. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> because, because you'll agree with this. Yeah. I think that out of the whole history of it and everywhere that we've been and where we've come from and all of our history with record companies and, and everyone, for me, the high point is actually what we've done in the past few months because we're in the process of recording our next album. Mm -hmm. and, um, oh, I see. and we've gone the whole down the road and up and down and now we've come to the point where it's just the four of us and we decided to 
lock ourselves in a in a small cottage just outside Berlin and we're not playing the album to even our management or our wives or our girlfriends until the album is completely finished mm -hmm. and that to me is by far for me the best thing because that's just us making music for me and that's what it's all about it's just making music that we believe in as opposed to making music that everyone else wants us to make we're just making how it how we want to do it so that for me is definitely the high point yeah that's uh well, that refers to uh, my first question as you as, as you told that you don't want to be like everybody else but just uh yeah looking uh, but you're just looking what what comes next and um doing uh doing your own thing mm -hmm. okay um well how does it feel when so somebody uh when suddenly everybody can sing along with your songs when you just stand um up on the stage and suddenly everybody sings along how does it feel fully how does it feel it's really good um it's really good <laughs> actually I, I i remember um very specifically the it was first a key moment wasn't the key it? moment yeah i think it was osnabrück Oberhausen. Oberhausen. and um it was the first show where almost the entire venue was singing two bar Our album hadn't even yeah, come out. It hadn't come out. Okay. And it was our first sort of headlining tour. We didn't really know what to expect. And it was really just like we kind of stopped and uh, just watched for ages and let them go on and they just didn't stop singing. And that was pretty mm. incredible. And they yeah. kept, and they keep singing. They, mm. they haven't stopped yet. So that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's a good thing. That's like a good four thing. years later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We take him sandwiches every now and then. <laughs> and was that a goal you were reaching for, looking for when uh, that everybody sings your songs? I think you always Or fantasize it just about happen? it. I think you always fantasize about it. Of course, yeah. And um, and we had always heard about what amazing crowd the German crowd is, and then we've done some. We had done some supports here and stuff, and seen that. Yeah. But this was like, wow, this is for us, amazing. You're very close to your fans, right? Yep. So this came along with your songs that everybody can sing along, I think. Mm -hmm. um, can, sorry, can I just say one more thing? Um, to answer your question again, the, um, whether it was we expected that, yes. you know, or, I mean, like Chris was saying, it's something maybe you dream about, but I remember very specifically being in our rehearsal room in West London and just writing these songs, and we did small gigs at the time in London, and uh, and you kind of... You know, maybe you have, you kind of dream about it in your head, but you never really imagine it until it happens. And then you're like, well, yeah, I mean, obviously that's what I was always hoping for. But yeah. when you're just in your own little space, rehearsal room, just us, it's it's a very different world. So it's it's very special when it finally happens. Then you're like, we've just been playing these songs for years now, just to ourselves. And then suddenly you bring it out into the world and share it and... And you realize it means so much to a lot of people, and they listen to it at home even at their own time. It's yeah. fucking crazy. Yeah. You said that it means much to people. Um, well, um, do you want them to um, feel the same you feel? Is this your intention when you uh, just write your songs? Or is there a bigger um, interpretation? The songs I always find have to be, for us, in terms of our style or the way that we do it. It it has to be left open to interpretation. For me, I, um, I don't I don't like listening to music that is too like, the dog sat on the mat with the cat and the rat and the bat. And I don't like it if it's very much just straightforward like that. I need to want to be able to see, a story in there and be able to run with my own mind. Mm -hmm. So, th that is the way that I write lyrics. And I think that we in terms of how we arrange everything in the music is all about leaving it as open to interpretation as possible. Uh, leaving an open interpretation is very good for my next question because um, how important um, is competition in that way for you? Competition with other musicians? Um, yes, and uh, like competition in um, selling albums and charts. I don't think that's ever come into no. any conversation we've ever had actually. Our only goals are ever, have ever been to, to better ourselves, never to to be better than someone else's. Like, yeah. Yeah. There, were, there were moments, I think, when we did our first support tours that you you see what other people, what other bands, what level they're at and then you kind of, you set that as a goal for yourself and go like, that's, I, I want I want that as well, you know. 
not not to be better than them or anything. But well, that's setting our own goal. Like that's exactly. Really, yeah. yeah. Be there. And and the funny thing is that that I find in this business amongst bands, there's like hardly any competi- com- competitive feeling, and it's actually very it's a big camaraderie when you meet other bands at festivals and. Yes. And it's it's really nice. I mean, mm. we know a lot of bands now, and it's such a nice thing to meet each other on the road. Yeah, yeah it's funny actually how many times we've been asked by people if yeah. there's some kind of competition or something yeah. between bands, but like there really just isn't. Not that I, well, I guess there might be between some bands, but mm. we don't come across it very often. Yes, but people people always compare, yeah. and it's discussions on Facebook mm. and everywhere you can find and ah oh, this band is not as good as this and you just have to say okay but this band make I don't know this band makes um, indie rock for example and this band makes I don't know um, progressive rock and you can't compare it mm-hmm. really. yeah. um, so um, what do you think about um, as, uh, casting shows like The Voice of Germany and for example um, Britain got, uh, Britain's Got Talent I don't ever watch it. I, I think it I sucks no and I can't wait for them to die. <laughs> <laughs> Not That's the contestants, the, no, show, yeah. the show. The show. Yeah. Okay. But all of those shows. Okay. I find it quite entertaining. Sorry? I find it quite entertaining. <laughs> but there you go. But I, I, but I find a lot of things entertaining that, that these guys sometimes find questionable and wonder how it might affect my brain. <laughs> 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 but I can't compare it to, to you know... I mean, for me, it's just this kind of entertaining thing, you know. It's like sometimes I go to McDonald's as well, and I enjoy it while I'm there. Yeah, yeah but that's the thing. I I've, I probably would as well. The first time that Pop Idol was on in England, I I really enjoyed it because it was it was fun to watch yes. it. I just find like what it kind of does to how people experience music and the industry and like how it's just all about money, really, in the end. And then those contestants they get kind of thrown out with one album that they don't even write, and then they just disappear and their dream is you know most of the time gets just chattered afterwards and yeah. so there's you know it's nice to watch for, for a bit and then everything else is just horrible about it I find yeah, but you see that's kind of the thing to, to, I live in uh, just outside London now and a lot of the people that we used to hang out with when we were still in London became vocal coaches and um, like Juliet she's mm-hmm. one of the vocal coaches and so I hear when we have a barbecue and I hear all the the behind the scenes stories of how the people get picked and how they get fast tracked through and all of the bits and pieces and that I object to. Because if it's going to be a competition, then it should be a competition. It shouldn't be a competition that's rigged from the beginning. Um, I, I like the idea of it being competition, but the idea of some people being put on TV to make them look idiotic just so that the show sells better and so that people watch it, that I object to. I don't think that's cool. It's not about music, but more about money and the show. Yeah. 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 So, um, what problems uh, do occur um, to you when you write your songs? Like I think checks. it's better to ask what problems don't occur when we write songs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like you want, like uh, I don't know because um, how do you find your texts and um, which um, subjects do you um, do you put in your songs and what do you have to deal with? Um, it, it's quite different everything like everything is different but whatever it is it needs to be there needs to be emotion attached to it any kind of emotion if there's no emotion attached to it then it just sounds cool it means nothing it's McDonald's it has to have emotion if it doesn't have McD- emotion in it for me then it's pointless it's a waste of time okay so if you don't feel anything writing the song you don't uh, put it on the album mm-hmm. okay Hopefully, um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, um, what do you like more, um, like acoustic tours or like if you just doing a normal show? Oh. Show. Uh, well, this is our first yeah, we've actual acoustic this, tour. Oh, okay. So I mean, we've done acoustic shows, but never a tour. So maybe ask that question when we finish. Okay. <laughs> we'll, tell you, we'll tell you then. Okay. In a yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what has been the funniest moment um uh, or experience uh, during a tour so far? Too many to keep. Jeez, <laughs> the okay, funniest. Pick, pick, uh, pick oh, uh, two or three. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Come on, we gotta dig something. Okay. I mean, I just it's I, hard because I thought of something yeah. very random. But when we played Rock am Ring, um, a few years ago. And and our crew have these uh, these um, 
walkie talkies to communicate, especially at big festivals because they're yeah. always in different places. Yes. And um, and all the crews of all the bands do so at a big festival. You can actually tune into somebody else's frequency. And when we had played our gig and we had a few beers, and then Chris, you got we were sitting on our bus and he got hold of one of the walkie talkies. And and first he started with our crew and just started talking all kinds of rubbish, <laughs> and then. Uh, and then after a while, he tried to find the frequency of the, one of the bands that was just on and then just kept on talking mambo jumbo until, <laughs> until they would change their frequency and then he would try and find it again and just keep on talking. <laughs> that was pretty good. Okay, yeah. good. okay um, and my last questions. Um, you, uh, if you said before that you were working on a new album. Um, what are your plans for 2013, if you can say something? For 2013? Uh, for, uh, 13, 14, next years, mm -hmm. what are your plans, if you can? Well, I think really time. at the moment we're just focusing on that album. Um, like we said, we're kind of, we're bringing it very much just the four of us, so that means that we have to sort of do a lot of work, so we're, I think we're going to do that and finish it off and then give it to people and then from there, who knows. <laughs> yeah, I, just, I think... Um, it's quite an existential thing because we're like probably having the best time creatively than that we've ever had like Absolutely. you know like Vegas was saying earlier so right now that th this album is just our main focus because it's just it's going so well writing it and experiencing it and um, now we've got this tour coming up so writing then this tour and then continue writing and recording and producing and few shows here yeah, then we've got we've got other shows booked as well, and um, you know um, probably some you know touring abroad as well, and uh, but that's the main thing. Sounds good. So yeah. well, that's it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Have a nice show. Thank Thanks. You and a lot of fun with the fans. <laughs>